Hi, welcome to Whaler's Workshop. I'm B9, and in today's episode, we'll be building the chariot. We are not building the chariot. We're we're not building the chariot. We're not building the chariot from Lost in Space. We're 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 building the Enterprise from the TV show Star Trek. We're building the original series, the TOS series. That's why I'm wearing my Enterprise T-shirt. And and that's what we're doing in in this episode. Why are you telling me? Uh, Star Trek sucks. Star Trek does not suck. Star Trek Star Trek does not suck. Star Trek was a good show. It was a very good show. In fact, it, again, that's what we're building the Enterprise one one thousand scale from Polar Lights. It, it's the Botany Bay edition. We're building the Botany Bay edition. That's what we're doing in this episode. So watch. Before we jump into the build, I thought we'd go over some of the tools that you might find handy to have around the shop when you're building models. Uh, the first is sprue cutters. This is going to help you get the uh, parts off of the sprue that you need to get off. I have two. I have one that's smaller and thinner and one that's uh, bigger and larger. And obviously the smaller one uh, helps you get into tighter, smaller places and remove material. The bigger one here uh, lets you cut through larger pieces of sprue to get at the material that you're looking to uh, remove. Along with those two, then I've got the uh, Exacto Gripster. Now I really like this one. Um, one, because of the material here, your hand hands tend not to slip. The second thing is, is the way the blade on screws is actually from the other end. If you remember the older ones, the uh, screw is around the neck piece, you're holding it, and you're actually unscrewing it while you're working with it. So I find this to work a little bit better. Okay, so once you've cut the material from the sprue, the next thing you're going to want to do is clean it up. And for that, they, uh, I recommend uh, sanding sticks like these. This actually came uh, from testers. It was a set, and obviously these are done in degrees um, of roughness. So you can remove... Uh, a large amount of material and then refine it by polishing it down to where you finally get to the uh, the white polishing stick and that just lets you polish the plastic once you've removed all the material and these are really really handy um, and they're relatively inexpensive to pick up and I highly recommend doing that I mean back in the day when my father and I built models we would just twist the parts off and kind of take a nail clipper and remove the material and now they have so many good supplies for modeling, it's, uh, it's, it's worth the time to pick up the things that uh, you'll find useful. One of those things that I just absolutely love is Tamiya Ultra Thin. And if you're looking to get back into modeling and you're looking at tube glue and other types of glue, I highly recommend this stuff. Uh, the way this is set up, this is, this is really, really thin glue and it comes with an applicator of its own so you just kind of paint brush it on um, and it works wonderfully and the bond is very strong it actually melts the uh, polystyrene so that the uh, pieces fuse together and become one so you can even make seam lines disappear with this stuff so I highly recommend it now once you begin uh, gluing the pieces together you're gonna have to have a way of clamping them now the for larger pieces, I picked these up at Harbor Tool, and I'll put a link down below here um, in the description box for the company. Um, but what it is is these are this is actually the only metal part of this. The rest of this is plastic. Harbor Freight, for those of you who don't know or maybe don't live in the U.S., it's a kind of a discount tool house. Um, they run a catalog as well, so you can probably order. I may even they may even ship internationally. I don't know. You'd have to look. Um, but what I like about this is the rest of this is uh, hard plastic, and then it's of course it's got plastic ends on it. And what this does is this allows you to simply slide the piece as close as you want it. You trigger up and get the tension as tight as you want it. And because the material is not metal, you're not doing any real damage to the plastic. 
So that's nice for once you glue something, you're holding it in place. Another is if you're building aircraft, you're going to need something to hold wings together. I picked these up. Um, these were actually in a grocery store aisle. These are real nice, and this is the type of thing you're looking for. If you see here on the ends, this has got a uh, rubberized coating on it. So, and the clamp is really, really strong. And the way it's made is they're made almost to hold like wire or cable. So they're rounded out here. So what that does is give you a real good solid pinch point there, as you can see on the tip of my finger. So if you're holding down a wing tips, or in our case, it'll be uh, working on uh, our Enterprise, um, we're going to need to be able to clamp some of those parts down. Now, apart from that, um, I'm going to now cut over and uh, take a look real quick at the instructions and uh, show you where I'm planning on starting. So hold on one second. Okay, so taking a quick look at the instructions here, as you can see, this is the uh, the buildup of the Botany Bay. It's only one small section of the instructions because the ship is so small in this kit that it's really, really simple to put together. Um, step one calls for the saucer being put together, which I'm hoping you're picking all that up. It gives you two different versions of the saucer. It gives you the uh, the production series, or then all of the uh, the uh, non-production, which would be the pilot episodes, the mirror mirror episode. So it gives you two variations of the saucer to build up. Um, here you're seeing which is the version I'm doing, which is the production series of the Starship. Um, are the two nacelles, and this is showing you how to put them together, along with they're giving you the color codes here, as you can see here for how to paint them. And then the last part is basically the secondary hull and how to put it together, which I hope you're getting a good shot of that there. But it's very few pieces. You've got one, two, you've got the uh, shuttle bay door, that's three, and then the uh, supports for the nacelles. This is kind of a, an odd thing. It's, uh, it's actually two pieces you're putting together that fit into a slot in the back of the secondary hull. And then the uh, antenna array dish there so looking at all this and uh, with the painting and everything else that's required I've decided I'm going to begin with the secondary hull here just getting those parts assembled and these pieces in place simply because I do think there's going to be a bit of cleanup work here and filling work here that's going to need to be done um, also uh, with the color schemes and the way I need to paint these I need to take a closer look at how to assemble the nacelles and I'll be doing the saucer last so if you hold on one minute we'll take a look at uh, how that looks once I get it together okay as you can see here we've got uh, that secondary hull all clamped up I think you can understand why these clamps are helpful um, these actually hold the model up which I really like um, and these smaller clamps can get all these pieces to fit together. Like I said, if you remember from the diagram, there's a couple of different stages of this. I'm going to take this apart here real quick. This should be dry by now. And uh, there's a couple different uh, versions of the ship that this kit allows you to build. And I'm using the, I'm going for the production series, which was the regular episodes. And one of the things that gave me a bit of a problem here, and I thought I'd show you this, is the shuttle bay door. Now, on the front of this, inside, there's a slotted area where there's a bit of a tab on the front of this piece where it's supposed to slide in and fit together. And this being a snap kit, I thought it would just go together, so I went ahead and glued this up, and of course, then it didn't fit. So I had to shave that piece off, and that's where the stuff the tools I was showing you earlier come in to help because I just removed the material with the exacto knife um, polished it down smooth and then I was able to go ahead and glue it in place so this comes out flush the way it should appear um, this is the gap here that I was talking about um, with the way that slot is cut into this hull it creates these channels that are gonna have to be filled um, I'm kind of surprised that these were actually made as two pieces as well. These came out pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and sand these some more. Um, once I get everything else built, I'll go ahead and uh, begin filling and sanding. 
Um, and the last part of this, of course, is I've got another kind of a nasty gap there as well. And then there's a bit of unevenness here. I don't know if you can hear that when you're running my fingernail over. But there's a bit of a click there because there's a gap. Same thing here and here. So that's going to at least have to be sanded down to get that to come up smooth. But so that's the secondary hull that's assembled. Um, that's the basic idea with the tools there with the clamps. Uh, so I'll take a we'll take a look at the Botany Bay now. And uh, give me one second. Let me get this cleared away, and I'll show you the Botany Bay. Okay, and here's our completed Botany Bay. Uh, this really gave me no trouble at all putting it together. It's just as simple as I showed you in the instructions. The only tr part that was a little bit tricky was getting these pieces here to attach. Um, and getting, making sure they're squared up there so that it looks right and that they're even. Um, as far as the rest of it goes, the only thing, other thing I've noticed is there is a bit of a gap here that I'm looking to fill. It doesn't come up flush to the surface of that. And of course, you know, uh, sanding these little pieces down, getting them uh, a little more uh, cleaned up before we start to prime. But other than that, it looks really good. The detail on this is quite good. Um, and it looks like a clear represent, representation of the uh, Space Seed episode, uh, which brought us Khan Noonien Singh, Ricardo Montalban, great character. Um, I don't know, the bays here though seem kind of really, really plain. And uh, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to scratch build something or just try to paint in things that give it a little bit more detail. Um, my inspiration for building this kit actually came from Interstellar Modeler. Um, he did this kit, uh, I think, about a year ago. And the kit came out really, really nice the way he did it. And he used pastels to create uh, demarcation lines to give you an, a sense that these, there were uh, panels here. And that the panels were shaded and colored and rusted different colors and I kind of like the way it came out. I'm also trying to work out the colors for all of this. Um, everything of course is done in testers, uh, colors in the box. I use Tamiya so I'm trying to do a bit of color matching here. I'm also trying to decide what color I want to make this ship because you know obviously the Enterprise is kind of a whitish gray color um, and I don't want this ship to be the same. I was thinking more of a more of a maybe a uh, gray green would be a nicer color for it to get it to stand out a bit from the uh, Enterprise but we'll, we'll see what I come up with um, as far as it goes the next part I'm going to work on are the nacelles so uh, give me a minute and I'll take you through all that hold on one second okay here are our two nacelles um, again this kit allows you to uh, build various uh, types of the Enterprise using the original TV show so you actually get three complete sets of these in this kit um, each one each set is, is different so you have to really pay attention to the letters on the inside um, here to know I don't know if you that camera's picking that up so that you can see it. Um, the other thing you want to do before you do uh, actually glue, start gluing these pieces up is actually take a look at what you're going to do with your clear parts versus what you're going to do with your painted parts because you do have um, you know the nacelles, uh, the, the area where it looks like it's spinning on the TV series, the clear parts go on the ends here. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you before I did anything with these is these are just out of a bag. These were not attached to a sprue. But I wanted you to take a look here and see and see if I could get this uh, to come in closer here. But you've got uh, a bit of material there. I'm hoping that's showing up. You get a bit of material right here that needs to be removed. Um, just little cleanup points that you need to make sure that you go over. I actually thought this was sprue. It looks like it's actually molded that way. It's on all the parts. 
unless that is material it does need to be removed I'll have to look at the instructions but you're also going to look like here I've got a bit of a neck so when I put this together it's not going to be a flush seam again I've got material here I don't know if you can see that I got a bit of material there and on this side there's a bit of material that needs to come off and these need to be sanded smooth I mean that is if you want to you want to get a real good finish on the kit you know some people may just want to throw the thing together because their kids asking them to do it and it's something to do on an afternoon on a rainy afternoon um, I actually consider this like a lifelong hobby so I take the time to invest in the uh, supplies and materials that I need to you know, do a better job uh, building these and even though I'm still working on snap kits, I'm trying to improve my skill level as I go. And I'm, I'm trying to show you guys, uh, you know, what I'm coming up with as I'm doing that. Um, the other thing I suggest is always dry fit your parts. Uh, one of the things that you don't want to do is what I just did earlier with the secondary hull, which was putting it together and then finding out the shuttle bay door wouldn't fit. So, yeah, lesson learned there. Um, you know, practice what I preach make sure I'm putting the parts together as I need to do them. Um, so in this case I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the stuff from the sprue that I need um, begin assembling these and uh, hopefully in the next episode uh, we'll take you through and we'll take a look at uh, how these came out and we'll see if I get anywhere with that uh, primary hull. Um, well that's my update so far thanks for watching and hopefully we make our deadline again our deadline is uh, September 8th if you found uh, any of this worthwhile and uh, you like what you're seeing, you want to see more, uh, hit that like button. That lets me know that you're liking what you're seeing and I'll continue to upload uh, more like this. Um, if you're liking what we're doing here on the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. Until next time.